Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. A while back, I started working on my second pair of DML panel speakers, the acrylic ones you might have seen in a previous video. Unfortunately, there seems to be a shortage of audio exciters available at the moment. Mine have been on back order for two months and it seems like it will be at least another month until I see them. So until I get those drivers in my hands, there's not much more I can do on the acrylic build. In the meantime, I'm going to use my time to explore and measure a few aspects of DML panels that will hopefully help me improve my future panels and maybe yours too. So the next few videos will focus more on individual concepts and ideas as I try things out just to see what does or doesn't work on the type of panels I plan to build. I hope you find these experiments useful. Today I'm looking at a set of measurements I took a while back, specifically looking at the differences in frequency response in different regions of the panel surface. This information could be useful in identifying relatively dead zones where it might be good to mount a second exciter. This is about efficiently using the whole panel whilst hopefully smoothing out the frequency response by using complementary driver placements. To test this, I split the panel up into 15 zones and took a near field measurement at a distance of four centimeters for each zone. Trying to work out what's going on with 15 measurements on the screen obviously isn't going to work. So I've also averaged the measurements and I'll be comparing the various zones to this average unless otherwise stated. Anyway, let's take a look at the results. I'll try and keep it brief because you know, Squiggly lines can only be interesting for so long. Here's what the average curve looks like with one twelfth of an octave of smoothing. Not bad. As you can see, it stays between 90 and 100 decibels all the way up from 75 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So let's start by looking at positions 5, 6, 8 and 9. These are the four zones that surround the exciter, which is placed at the two-fifths position in the upper half of the panel. The lines here are relatively smooth and follow the average pretty closely. With the exception of a few significant dips, these lines generally stay above the average line, indicating a higher SPL throughout the frequency range. This isn't really surprising, as this is where the sound is actually emanating from. Compare that to the four zones furthest away from the driver. Zones 10, 11, 13 and 14. These lines appear much choppier without smoothness at any frequency. They also stay below the average line aside from a few big peaks. I'm not surprised at the lower overall SPL, but I'm not sure why they're so lumpy in comparison to the other zones. Hit me up with any theories and I'll see if I can test them out. So what's going on in the center? Position 8 is pretty loud and is also one of the smoothest responses. It actually follows the average line pretty faithfully. The four corners are very much a mixed bag, with the furthest corners exhibiting very weak bass response. The nearer corners aren't too bad but do have a few big lumps, particularly in that important 100 to 500 hertz area. So where's the sweet spot on this thing? Well, disregarding the corners, let's start with the nine central zones and work it out via some reduction. So 12 is lumpy and 11 and 10. All the usual suspects in the far corner actually. Four and seven keep showing up on this lower edge or sort of lower region. So let's remove those two. Okay, not too bad. What are we left with? Zones 5, 6, 8 and 9. The same ones we highlighted earlier that surround the driver position. I don't like the look of this peak, so I'll remove number 5. Better. These three seem to complement each other pretty well, but if we look at these dips at 100Hz and 9kHz, it looks like we have a winner. Throw out 6 and 9, and that just leaves us with zone 8 the dead center. 
Here it is again compared with the average. So what can I learn from this? Well, for a start, putting a second exciter in the second position like I did originally seems like a bad idea, as you're just messing with the best performing part of the panel. That is, assuming you're using the same two-fifths position for your first driver and have a similarly shaped panel. This one is 90 centimeters by 40 centimeters, by the way. Instead, I'd aim for a placement somewhere at the opposite end of the panel particularly around that opposite corner where the SPL is relatively weak and the response is nothing to write home about either. Of course, I can't pinpoint the best spot from these tests, but it's a good starting point for some trial and error testing. It doesn't escape my attention that manufacturers such as Dayton Audio seem to recommend multiple drivers go near each other, like in this diagram. This is probably due somewhat to the shape of their example panels which tend to be more square than my tall ones. Think golden ratio. In this instance, the difference between the near zones and the far zones would be relatively less, and the SPL drop-off and inconsistency presumably less as well. For taller panels, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I think having an exciter at either end will be better as you'll be using the entire panel surface more efficiently. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna test on the acrylic panels, if my exciters ever arrive. Hey, if you've made it this far, thanks very much. Please consider subscribing to see more of my experiments and eventually my new and improved floor standing panels. Next time, I'm gonna look at a few possible ways to try and improve the base response in these things. See you then.